Our third representation is an energy pie chart. The purpose of this is to make you think about energy. We find that students in this class tend to forget about energy and try and solve problems always using forces, probably because you've done more of that at school. But in fact, energy is often the easiest way to solve these things, and the energy pie chart forces you to think, OK, so can we use energy? What forms of energy are here? How are they changing? Can we put equations on them? So let's do our examples. Let's have a throwing a ball through the air. Goes up, comes down. And let's say I throw it, and it ends up on the ground. Now the first thing to think about is where you want your potential energy to be zero. For potential energy, you can set the zero any way you like as long as you're consistent. For these diagrams, I usually pick it at the lowest point, so I'll have PE equals zero down here at the ground because it's hard to draw a pie chart with negative values of potential energy. But anyway, up to you. So to begin with, when it's in my hand, the energy is all in the form of chemical energy. Just after it leaves my hand, the chemical energy has been used up, and we're going to have mostly kinetic energy, so maybe, I don't know, that amount of kinetic energy and a little bit of potential energy because it's above the ground. The top of the arc there'll be less kinetic energy and more potential energy because it's higher. As it comes down again it'll look more like this. When it hits the ground it's purely, just before it hits the ground, that is, it's purely kinetic energy. And then after it's bounced off the ground and rolled to a halt, that energy has gone into the form of heat. Uh, it's presumably caused vibrations in the floor and sound waves, and the sound waves have spread around the room and hit the walls, and all of it ends up as heat. So right at the end, it's heat. Now in this case, these circles should all be roughly the same size, because the total energy is not changing. Um, I haven't drawn a very good job here. Don't worry about the precise sizes of the different slices of the pie. The purpose of this diagram is not accuracy. It's just to see, well, what forms of energy are there? How big do I think they're going to be? Um, get those thoughts in your brain. Now about another example. Let's imagine we've got someone jumping up and down on a trampoline. So we have our trampoline. And let's say we're starting off with it bent down and someone about to push off. Then, a bit later, the trampoline is straightened out. And our person is flying through the air. They get to the top of their arc. And they come back down again, they hit the trampoline. And they push it down. Now in this case we also have the energy in the trampoline, the elastic energy or spring energy when it's stretched. We'll pick our potential energy as the lowest point, so PE equals zero here. It's often worth drawing that in. So here there's going to be some elastic energy and some chemical energy in the person's legs. I don't know what the balance is, but it doesn't really matter. So we might have elastic and chemical. Once they're in the air, the elastic and chemical energy have gone away. You've got quite a lot of kinetic energy and little potential energy. So we might have lots of kinetic energy and a little bit of potential energy. The top of the arc, they're not moving, so it's going to be all potential energy for a moment. As it comes down, the kinetic energy will increase again until right at the end, as the elastic stretches, you'll be back to this diagram. So that's how you do these diagrams. It's just to make you think, 
what forms of energy are here, which are getting bigger, which are getting smaller, which ones are transforming into which is energy conserved, or is some of it leaking away into some other form we don't know about.